It's time again for Talking Trade, sponsored by MMAC's World Trade Association and Michael Best Strategies. Welcome to another session of Talking Trade. I'm Ken Waslick, Managing Director of EM Waslick & Associates, an international business development company. I'm Sandy Siegel, President of MEJ. Welcome. Our guest today, Aaron Annabel. And Aaron's the Consulate General of Canada in Chicago, uh, Council of Foreign Policy and Diplomacy Services. So very excited to have you today, Aaron. And um, I think most of our listeners know Canada is a, a really significant trade partner for the U.S. and certainly for Wisconsin. Um, I believe many years um, we you know, Canada has been our number one export destination. So a very, very vital trade partner and of course an ally. So tell us, give us, you know, bring us up to date on some recent trade statistics and, and if there's some new, um, you know, new surprises that opened up with USMCA um, and, and, you know, new commodities and so forth. Yeah, happy to do that, and 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 really pleased, uh, really pleased to join you uh, today, Sandy and Ken, uh, to talk about uh, uh, a trading relationship that's very valuable uh, for Canada and also for Wisconsin. Um, so, so I'll get I'll give you sort of a brief overview. Uh, we uh, we annually produce what we call state trade fact sheets, uh, and that sort of illustrates the latest numbers uh, in the trading relationship that Canada has with each US state. So of course uh, we have one of these for Wisconsin and uh, we just received uh, our updated version not too long ago. So I do have some, some newer numbers and you know, uh, overall uh, the Midwest is, is a very important region for Canada US relations in many ways, uh, but especially for trade, obviously given the proximity to the border uh, and the massive volume of trade that, that, that crosses the Canada-US border across the countries. So um, uh, Canada's investment in Wisconsin uh, has led to 174 Canadian-owned companies operating in the state. Uh, and together they employ over 22,000 uh, local workers in Wisconsin. Uh, so what we saw last year, uh, that Canada of course remains uh, Wisconsin's largest export market. Uh, annual two-way trade in goods between the two economies was valued at 14.7 billion in 2022. Uh, and that's an increase in 13% uh, from 2021. And, and so this means that, that the Canadians buy 31% of all foreign bound goods produced in Wisconsin. And that's more than the next five lar largest foreign markets for the state combined. Um, Last year specifically, uh, Wisconsin's exports to Canada were up 15%. Um, so if we break that down a bit, uh, Wisconsin sells more paper and plastic products to Canada than anything else. Uh, last year that was valued at 621 million and 615 million respectively. Uh, but Canada also buys about 432 million worth of motors and generators to power our cars, machinery and our homes. Uh, and 377 million worth of beverages. Uh, and that includes Wisconsin craft beer and other alcohol. And, and, you know, I think if you folks were so inclined to export some spotted cow, I'm sure we would happily consume it. Um, and, and yeah, I think if you look at sort of on the import side, uh, nearly a quarter of all Wisconsin imports from Canada uh, are forestry projects, products uh, with an annual import value of around 1.4 billion. Uh, and the next largest categories of Wisconsin imports from Canada are agricultural products and equipment and machinery, each worth about seven, about 800 million annually. And, and you know, we're very optimistic about, about seeing this growth continue uh, given the, the very positive and productive relationship we have with Wisconsin and a, a, very, a very smoothly flowing trade relationship, I would say. And maybe one thing I would note uh, on our agriculture trade, which I know uh, that sector is so important in Wisconsin. Uh, if we look at agricultural trade between the two countries writ large, uh, it's very balanced trade. Uh, it's about just over 30 billion flowing each way uh, from Canada to the US and, and vice versa. So, so uh, again, a very balanced uh, agricultural trade relationship. Well, that's uh, that's great. Uh, 
you know, our relationship with Canada, both economically, but in other asset aspects as well, uh, on the security side, as well as uh, our we're NATO partners. Uh, recently, uh, two Congress uh, people, uh, Lizzie Fletcher and Mark uh, Amade, uh, announced a uh, Canadian Economic and Security Caucus, uh, ACES. And uh, tell us more about what that caucus is uh, meant to do and how it's going to strengthen our both economic but our also our security side of, of our relationship. Yeah, so so the, the American Canadian Economic and Security Caucus, what, what everyone's sort of calling the ACES Caucus, uh, was first launched uh, in the U.S. House uh, on June 7th. Uh, by, as you say, co-chairing, uh, it's a bipartisan caucus, so co-chaired by representatives Amadai uh, and Representative Fletcher. Um, and then a, an affiliated U.S. Senate caucus uh, was launched on June 22nd uh, by Senators Angus King and Kevin Kramer. Uh, so, so this caucus was formed in consultation with the Canadian Embassy in Washington, D.C., uh, and it's designed as a bipartisan coalition uh, dedicated to advancing policies that strengthen the economic and security relationship uh, between the United States and Canada. Uh, so across both chambers, uh, the caucus currently has right now 13 members representing eight states. Uh, so still in, still in the early days, um, the caucus is going to highlight uh, uh, the unmatched depth and breadth uh, of the Canada-US relationship and, and basically provide a forum uh, for Canada-US policy alignment uh, uh, on, on key issues that are important to both countries, so both economic and security. And, and you know, obviously the USCMCA prov provides a very solid foundation uh, for our trading relationship, uh, and we were very pleased to modernize that agreement uh, a couple of years ago, uh, but I think uh, this caucus here is designed to, to maybe look look beyond uh, USMCA at sort of, you know, wider coordination uh, um, uh, among our two countries. Um, you know, and of course, uh, in addition to economic ties, uh, the US and Canada also share uh, the closest uh, security and defense relationship of any US ally. Uh, we are both NATO, NATO members. Uh, uh, we cooperate very closely on border security, uh, joint continental defense operations like NORAD, and of course, intelligence uh, uh, sharing through our uh, our five eyes, five country collaboration, and through our respective uh, national security agencies. And and you know, I think what does this mean for uh, Wisconsin? Uh, so uh, when they announced the caucus, uh, they noted that at least 300 House members uh, are in what they call the quarter billion club. Uh, so that would be congressional districts with over 250 million in annual exports of goods to Canada. Um, so we know, of course, there's congressional districts in Wisconsin that would fall into that category. And, and so one of the things that we are going to be doing at the Consul General here in the region, um, we will be trying to meet with uh, Wisconsin uh, uh, federal members of Congress uh, and hopefully uh, uh, seek their interest in, in, in ideally joining this caucus. So, so, so that's what we'll be up to. Uh, in the coming weeks and months to hopefully try and generate interest. Well, that's really interesting. And of course, this is another uh, avenue to strengthen our very close relationship. I know we're very proud that I, I believe between Canada and the United States, we have the most, the longest unguarded border in the world, which is something very, very notable to, to, to mention. But, uh, but going back on the economic security, during the pandemic, we all, uh, experience very long supply chain difficulties. Uh, Sandy was in the mix of all this, uh, longer lead times, and then the reemergence, or I would say just the acceleration of nearshoring, onshoring, French shoring, and it definitely would be French shoring. So do you see this with the Can uh, Canadian companies as well as bringing back manufacturing back to North America and then our partnering both on both sides of the border, uh, really strengthening and increasing our uh, bilateral trade? Uh, yeah, I, I would say absolutely. Uh, you know, and, and you mentioned sort of friend shoring, and sometimes you hear it as ally shoring. Uh, 
Uh, I would say it's a it's an area where where our two uh, our two current federal administrations are, are very much aligned. Uh, and, and I also think it extends to uh, uh, our private sector. Uh, you know, of course, you have many uh, large Canadian companies that, that are actually actually already operating uh, on both sides of the border and, and, and you know, growing their operations in, in both countries. Uh, our Canada's deputy prime minister uh, has been a very strong voice. Uh, for ally shoring and, and will continue to be. Uh, and, and if we look back a little bit to, uh, to March of this year, uh, we were very excited uh, to welcome President uh, Biden to, to his first visit to Canada as president. Uh, and, and during that visit, the president and the prime minister uh, shared ideas uh, on how to build uh, uh, on both USMCA and also on the, uh, the, the bilateral roadmap we have, which is called the Roadmap uh, for Renewed Canada-US Partnership, uh, which has been in place for a couple of years and sort of serves uh, as our blueprint to guide progress in, in areas of, of economic competitiveness, uh, sustainability, uh, diversity and inclusion. Uh, and so that really provides sort of our, our, our overall map to how to advance our shared uh, uh, objectives, um, and, and you know we are particularly focused on uh, bolstering uh, mutual economic competitiveness uh, to ally shore uh, our shared supply chains, and, and also uh, a specific talk, topic uh, was to secure a shared supply of critical minerals, which, as we know, uh, are becoming much more strategic uh, to everybody's economies. And you know I think both of our countries have a very keen shared interest in um, uh, reducing reliance on, on, on sources that are from more further away and sort of trying to work together. Uh, and if you look at uh, projections for the Canadian economy, uh, the International Monetary Fund uh, projects that the Canadian economy will expand uh, at the fastest rate uh, among the G7 next year. Um, you know, and we just had some numbers today from our, our national statistics agency, uh, Canada's inflation rate uh, fell to 2.8% in June, and that's our lowest level uh, in more than two years. Uh, so that was great news. Um, and, and, and in terms of opportunities for trading with Wisconsin, uh, I would say Canada's uh, strong economic growth uh, has been uh, driven by record setting uh, population growth. Uh, so uh, in June, uh, Canada reached a historic milestone of, of achieve. Our, our population is now at 40 million. Uh, and, and, and what's really interesting to note about that uh, is temporary and permanent migration uh, accounted for 96% of our recent population growth uh, as more people from all over the world uh, are drawn to the opportunities available in Canada. Uh, uh, our in international migration to Canada is expected to continue in the coming years. Uh, and at this rate, uh, the Canadian population uh, is projected to reach 50 million uh, by 2043. Uh, so that's really impressive growth. Uh, and, and for us, uh, migration is good for our economy. Uh, uh, immigrants own in one in three Canadian uh, small businesses. Uh, and they comprise one in four Canadian healthcare workers. Uh, so uh, I think what you're seeing is a is a rapidly growing uh, population, uh, an increasingly diverse population, and and all of those things uh, I think make us a great uh, uh, trading partner and market choice for Wisconsin. Absolutely, and and certainly provide opportunities. That's very exciting. Um, Quickly, Aaron, is on, on the forwarding side, which I have great interest in, and talking about supply chain, we move a lot of goods in and through Canada. Um, it's a great gateway, you know, in and out of Europe and, and Asia and to and from Canada. Tell me, I want to hear more about the recent merger with CP and Kansas City uh, Railways and the opportunities you see for um, moving goods. Uh, yeah, happy to talk a little bit about that. I was actually, um, I, I was lucky enough uh, back in April to to be at the uh, what they call the last spike uh, event in in Kansas City to officially inaugurate the Link Railroad, uh, and I can just tell you the the excitement uh, in Kansas City was palpable. Um, so so yeah, as uh, this was on April 14th, 
uh, the Canadian Pacific and Kansas City Southern Railways uh, combined to create what is now called uh, Canadian Pacific Kansas City. Uh, and this is the first single line railway uh, connecting Canada, the US and Mexico. Uh, and of course that parallels uh, our, our, our USMCA relationship. Uh, so uh, it is now a 20,000 mile network uh, and it provides strategic port access uh, on coasts around the continent uh, from Vancouver uh, to Atlantic Canada, to the Gulf of Mexico, and, and, and further out to uh, even Lazaro Cardenas on uh, Mexico's Pacific coast. Um, and, and this will bring increased trade opportunities, uh, I think for Wisconsin businesses, uh, including in agriculture and manufacturing, uh, because you know, at the end of the day, uh, Wisconsin's largest trading partners are Canada and then Mexico. And, and so thus uh, a direct single line train service uh, will enhance the state's already established trade corridors. Uh, and I know there are onloading points uh, in Wisconsin, uh, as well as in Minnesota close by and Illinois and Iowa. Um, and, and basically uh, I think they'll, they'll, you will see not only enhanced efficiency from this connection, uh, but also significant uh, emissions reductions. Uh, because we're now operating on this single line, uh, it reduces some of the emissions that were involved in, you know, using trucks to, to transport from, from line to line. Um, and, and I think the other sort of spin-off benefit that, 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 that's important to, uh, to Wisconsin, uh, so CPKC uh, has committed uh, to operating with Am Amtrak uh, to Im increase frequency of the Hawaii Hiawatha service uh, between Chicago and Milwaukee, uh, and possibly even extend uh, Hiawatha service from Milwaukee to St. Paul, Minnesota, uh, creating a second round trip uh, on the Twin Cities, Milwaukee, Chicago corridor. So that that's potentially exciting as well. An added bonus, absolutely. Well, I'm very excited. We're you know something definitely we are anxious to take advantage of, and 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 moving trucks in and out of Mexico is not always the easiest thing. So right. uh, a rail service is, is very exciting. Um, I you know there's just oh, so many things love to talk about, but very exciting, all positive news. Um, and um, you know, um, well, uh, Sandy, I would just uh, like to add that Canada is a great tourist uh, destination yes, as, well. Yes, as well. I mean, uh, I've enjoyed many times going up to Ottawa and uh, Toronto, Vancouver. And I'm looking forward to my next next fishing trip to Manitoba. So and, and, that's always it. I I appreciate that, Ken. And I, I have to say right back at you because next next Saturday I I'm looking forward. I'm 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 off to Door County uh, for okay. a week. Uh, uh, I, I went there for the first time last year and just fell in love with it. So I'm very excited about that. Excellent. That's terrific. Aaron, Annabelle, thank you so much for joining us on Talking Trade and. Um, thank you all for joining us on another episode. Thank you very much and look forward to talking to you again. Thanks, Aaron. You've been listening to Talking Trade, sponsored by MMAC's World Trade Association and Michael Best Strategies. <laughs>